Let me figure this out. Every time I tell you, it's like the first time I'm doing this for some reason. I'm a little early today just so I can do this and not get too many people upset with me. Okay, let's see. Later. How are you guys doing? Ooh, I got a Ryan Reynolds ad before this came on. Okay. We have one person watching and that's me. Right? <laughs> Hi, is it Cossie? Hello. Okay, we are making red ornament macarons today. I'm so excited. I have never made ornament macarons. So this should be fun. If you can see in the back, I've got my macaron gingerbread houses. Isn't that so cute? I was so excited about these. Hi guys, hi from Virginia, hi Trista, hi. I was so excited about these. And then I don't know if everyone here has Instagram, but if you follow Doc Macaron, go look at his macaron house. Mine looks like a clunky mess compared to his. I was like, don't compare it to other people. I'm not saying that I don't like mine. I was just very excited about his. They were, it was amazing. All right. Hi, hi guys. Lorraine, hi. Lorraine, Lorraine. Why do I always stumble on your name? Lorraine, Lorraine. Usually it's Lorraine, right? Lorraine. Lorraine. I'm sorry. Just let it go, Nicole. Right? Um, okay. Hello, guys. Bigosh, hello. Hi. We got a few more minutes before we start. Hello. I am wearing a very oversized sweater, so I'm. I just didn't want to take it off. But now I'm regretting my choices. Hello. You say Bonita Purdy Brown. I like that name. It's, hi, Carrie, hi. You guys, there's like this fear inside me instilled inside of me as I pronounce everybody's names. I'm like, there's other ways like this could go. And I feel terrible if I mispronounce your name. So I apologize that I do this every single live. I'll try not to stumble on names. Okay. Thanks, Courtney. Nice to see you. I hope your kiddos are doing well. And you, of course. Pronounce Lo Lorene. Okay, Lorene. 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 Thank you so much for doing that for me because I really want to pronounce your name correctly. It's good to see you again, Lorene. Okay. So I'm gonna get started. Syra. 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 Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> That's how everyone should just come into the chat is how to phonetically say your name. So Miss Nicole who can't read has a better day. No, I'm just joking. Okay. Um, could you try stand mixer again on the live? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll do a bigger on the next live, I can do a bigger portion size so we can see the stand mixer. Do you want to see the, for those who would want to see a stand mixer, 
I only use my hand mixer because I'm doing smaller batches. But if I do a larger batch, I definitely still use my hand, my stand mixer. And uh, did you wanna see like mixing in the dries with the hand mixer too, or just simply the meringue with the stand mixer? Sorry, I keep messing up the words. With the stand mixer, would you want to see the dries mixed in with that stand mixer or specifically just the meringue? Hello, Margo. Both, please. All right, Ruby. Okay, so maybe the next live, I won't be doing one next week. Um, we'll see if I do one the last, and it could be like our last um, one of 2021. So in two weeks, maybe we'll do a live with our stand mixer and make some New Year's Eve kind of glitzy, glammy macarons. That would be fun. You got it. Okay. Hi, Steffi. Nice to see you. All right, friends. We're going to start and we're going to make some red macarons. So if you're part of the newsletter, I sent out these little frosty ornament templates. Of course, once you pipe, you're not going to see like the faces or anything, but I just kept them on there to give you a visual if you wanted to make a little frosty ornament. But I'm just, I'm not using them as a frosty ornament. I'm just going to make red ornaments today. I'm not going to split my batter even. It's going to be solely red. And we are going to be using Red Rose from the Sugar Art. It's a master elite. And I have dark cocoa powder in my dries as well. So just a regular ornament. And then we have, I'm not gonna do this little loop up here because I made, I made little fondant gold little loops, if you can see that. Um, so that will kind of go in the frosting when I sandwich them together at the end. So this is just fondant and then I roll them really small and then um, folded them and let them dry. I did these today. So they're not completely dry yet, but they will dry. You could also use gum paste, which will dry faster and harder than fondant. But, or you could use fondant and put some Tylose powder. If you've ever heard of Tylose powder, it should be at, there's Michael's and all the craft stores have it. You can put powder into it and it dries like a gum paste would. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be doing these. I have a tiny little section where I want my batter to be smaller because it's going to be like the top of that ornament so i have a smaller tip and a larger tip prepared and we can get started let me see um i've got this for my oster oven man i already forget how to say it um for this oven the little toaster oven and then i also have just regular circles if i have excess batter i'm gonna go for that all right, let's see. Happy Wednesday, David. TN Sanchez, hello, happy hump day. Okay, so, black cocoa powder. There's lots of different brands. This is the, the brand that I've used and um, it is very dark. It doesn't taste as good as a medium brown. So like if you want taste, then I suggest going with, I usually use Calibo, but I ran out. So now I have this Hershey's Dark, Special Dark is what it's called. And this works great too in your macarons. The thing when you're doing chocolate macarons is that you wanna make sure you don't put too much cocoa powder. I'm gonna give a little caveat. <laughs> I put in an extra couple grams of cocoa powder accidentally, I like spilled in when I was scaling today. So hopefully we don't get wrinkled tops, but that is something that could happen. If you use too much cocoa powder in your macaron, you could get these wrinkly tops because it's gonna break down the batter and it's not gonna be a stable batter and your shell is not gonna be sturdy. Okay, so that's something that does happen. You see a lot of people with um, wrinkled tops when they're doing chocolate macarons and that's the reason 
the extra fat that you're adding in just can cause an issue if you do too much. So the ratios for today, I have 80 grams of liquid egg whites. I have, I think it was 72 grams of sugar. 72 grams of sugar, three grams of egg white powder is already mixed into my sugar. And then I've got 100 grams of almond flour. I will write this down in the caption afterwards. Sometimes I forget to do the captions. I'm sorry about that. Today I will because this is not my regular recipe, just scaled down. It's my chocolate recipe from my um, chocolate macaron video, but scaled down. So this is 100 grams of almond flour, 106 grams of confectioner sugar, and then it's supposed to be seven grams of cocoa powder and I got nine in there accidentally, so hopefully it's not too much of a problem, but seven. So I did half and half of the dark and of the Hershey's cocoa. So I want it to taste good. You know, like I, I don't want it just to be black. It's not that the black doesn't make it taste good, it's just it doesn't taste as chocolatey. So that's what I mean by good. It's not like I'm making it taste awful by adding it. Okay enough talking right so I'm gonna mix this I'm gonna put in the red rose sugar coloring in my meringue and in my dries at different stages so we can get a nice red color so I'll show you obviously when I'm adding it but I like to add it to every stage of the process to make sure it's nice and bright hi Marisol happy holidays all right let's do this I feel like there was something else I want to do. I have my, my gas stove turned on. My oven is heating up, so if I do no rest, it's ready. And then I'll, I turn this on, it heats up really quickly, so I don't feel it's necessary to have it preheated as long for the toaster oven. I'm gonna mix this the hand mixer it gets really foamy quickly so you can start adding in your sugar very nice and quick easy fast. sugar is dissolved I'm gonna add in my red rose for the first time so I'm gonna get a little I really need to get small measurements so I can tell you guys better but it's gonna be about let's see if I have a quarter just so I know because I never know how much like a tip is so it's probably an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm adding an eighth of a teaspoon now. I always recover this as I'm going, even if I'm gonna add more, cause it can make a mess. You don't want coloring all over. I think once you do it once, you, you don't ever keep it open. So adding it early is gonna hydrate it and get it really nice incorporated but it also aerates it, which is gonna lighten it. So that's why I add more later as well. Sing in the red song. I'm 
never made ornament macarons. I'm so excited. They're one of my favorites. Everyone is so creative. Um, is it Safira from Sugar Fairy Dust? No, Sugar Dust. Darn it. Now I need to figure out. But she has some beautiful ornate ornaments from a few years back. Anyone know Safira's handle? It's like there's sugar sprinkles and dust maybe in the name. Beautiful, beautiful design on her page. I'm going to turn it up to C2. Probably at like a medium peak here. It's going over, but it does hold shape. I'm gonna add a little bit more into my meringue and then a little bit into my dries. So about the same as last time. So another, so altogether about a quarter of a teaspoon goes into probably the whole thing. It's probably equivalent to a quarter of a teaspoon in, in a batch that has 80 grams egg whites. red macarons that are chocolate flavored and the dark chocolate uh, cocoa powder will help it darken the color and then the the lighter cocoa powder from Hershey will give it better flavor. Hi Chris, good afternoon. 
doesn't flop over like last time, right? And it's it's being straight up in the bowl. I just want to make sure it's like that all around. So I'm going to go a tiny bit longer, just like a tiny, tiny bit on speed table, just to get underneath here. you see striations in the bowl and that they hold shape right you want your meringue to be super nice and stiff that was really a weak so we're good when you're using a stand mixer it's gonna clump around the whisk and stay there that's a good way to know when you see that ball start to go around your whisk that you can check it. I was a little bit shy with this. I'm gonna just do a tiny bit more because I want us to come out with some red. Okay. We'll see how it goes as we do it. I'm gonna mix in that red. And we're gonna add in this. So see how dark this is already starting out because of the cocoa powder mixed in with our almond flour and confectioner sugar. So that's gonna help deepen this color. And then we added a little more red into those dries too. But you have to be careful. When you're mixing with chocolate, it does deflate faster because you added that more, that more fat to it, right? Even though almond flour has a lot of fat, we're just adding even more. That's why I cut back on my almond flour in the recipe a few grams, and I add more confectioner sugar to offset the more fat from the cocoa butter. But you just wanna make sure you're really careful not to over mix this mixture. Again, I prepared a bigger tip, so it's like an 11, 11 millimeter tip, equivalent to about a 12, Wilton 12. And then I've got a six millimeter tip, which isn't too, too small. I really shouldn't have this sitting, but. So that will be for the tip top of the ornament. Try to get all these dries in. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Christina. See how that cocoa powder changed the color, though? Look, it's like this beautiful wine, deep burgundy. Crossing my fingers, my extra cocoa powder slip did not ruin this batch. It smells so good. I love chocolate macarons. Chocolate is not my first choice in a dessert ever. For some reason, like brownies and chocolate macarons, so good. Okay, so 
I have put in the dries and I've tumbled it so it's all even. Now I'm gonna do a couple of deflates, which is the macronage process, right? Deflating the batter to the right consistency. This um, black cocoa powder made it so burgundy and not as bright red as I wanted. So my apologies with that. Because the red rose is definitely not this color, you know. It's more pinkish than than more burgundy because it has its red rose coloring, but well. Okay. So I do I don't macronage chocolate max macaron batter as much. I'm being super cautious with it because it can be temperamental. I'm happy with the flow here, and I'm gonna pour most of it into the, my cup with a big tip. Well, I'm just a little sad that the black cocoa powder took over so much. All right. And then we will, for the tip, do a little bit. Then I'm going to keep this out for a second and refill my bag since I closed it already. Too much black cocoa powder. Yeah, thank you, Trista. It's pretty. It's just not what I wanted. The um, I was kicking myself with that, putting extra black cocoa powder in accidentally. So, we'll see. It's a bummer though. Okay, so as mentioned before, we've got this little template. I'm not gonna do the loop up top. I did that with fondant. So I'm just gonna do the little square or the rectangle thing that's on top of the circle. So I'll use my big piping tip to do the big circle. And then I'll use the square, I mean the small piping tip, to do the little tip top, okay? All right. When you're doing big circles, there's a few ways that you can pipe. You could do it like that, and I know it's gonna spread a little bit, so I leave about this much room, whatever that would be. I'm so not precise. I think that's probably like an eighth of an inch until it's gonna hit the end. So it doesn't quite hit the circle, so I leave about an eighth of an inch for it to spread or you could do a circle. Um, so like if you've ever seen pastry chefs piping a decoit, like um, a cake that is a meringue based cake with a nut flour, uh, they will usually do it in a circle like this, all the way out. But I find I prefer this, so now I gotta do two like that though, just in case. So I have a match. It really is your preference, whatever you feel comfortable with. You can always take a scribe afterwards and get rid of those circles if you don't want it to have that um, circular look. So you can definitely get rid of those, but it's definitely a look too if you prefer 
seen it, but for ornaments specifically, I don't think we want it. But see how much thinner, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, these two are thinner than these fatties. Um, so you wanna make sure you stick to one way. It's like this wine color, isn't it? I'm gonna fill a little bit more in here. But you'd think we added like a straight black color to this and that's just cocoa powder. Yes, with the gold royal icing, it will, it'll look really nice. You're right. I just wanted like a ruby red and I added that too much chocolate. Okay, so here's some babies. These are going to be fat, fatter and thicker than my normal. So I'm gonna have to take that into consider consideration when baking. room for a couple more I should have done <laughs> I should have done the little pieces first y'all choo 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 back at it don't do this at home gonna try to get these on here the same here we go not ideal but it works okay so let's do the little little top portion of these ornaments just want to make sure it's about the same thickness so you're not going to cause um, a complete different like when it bakes up it'll be really strange and not look nice if it is a different thickness so I might have to add a little bit more The feet don't always develop nicely if it's not consistent with the whole um, the whole rest of the design. Words. I'm covering it. They look like balloons. Aw, oh, thank you, Roberta. Okay, so let me take this bad boy out now. Sorry, bad boy or girl, doesn't matter. Okay, we'll add a couple more. I'm just gonna do one more row here. See how much batter we have actually. We'll do middle. It's 
stopping short of reaching that line. Okay, and then the little tip. I have some more. So let's try to do one more. One, two, three. Look at how small these ones are compared to the other one. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. All right, I'm going to start this guy and do 300, start and turn off my big oven because I'm not going to need it. These mats are definitely big treats. They're way bigger than our usual, uh, well my usual, two inch, one and a th one and seven, I mean, one and three fourths to um, two inch macarons is my usual. So I don't know what you guys usually do, but they are bigger. So I'm gonna paint these tips gold after just to give it um, a separation of color without having to divide my batter just for these little teeny things. And if you wanted to do two different colors, it'd be really cute. You know how a lot of the clip art of, of ornaments have the little jagged part where they, the metal part connects to your ornament? You could do that by pulling. You could do a different color up here at the tip where the metal would connect to your ornament. And you could just pull down the color with a scribe or a toothpick just pulling down that color will give you that jagged effect that is on a, an ornament. Be really cute. Okay. Definitely, depending on your preference of how you want to pipe, you can do it multiple ways, but this is how I prefer. And we are ready to put them in the oven because once this is heated up, because I can do no rest with this convection setting. Let's pretend. Hi, macro maker. Cookie nibs, hello. I haven't seen you either. Hope you and your family is doing well too. Hi from Vienna. Hello. Okay. So we've got our ornaments piped out. Pretty simple design, just a big circle with that nice little rectangle on top to be that where the metal connects to your ornament. And then afterwards, you can add all of the decorations you want. If you wanted to, do this in white, you could also make a little frosty face like these, or 
you could do um, at this point sprinkles in a design that you know like an ornament would have a little zigzag sprinkle design over it in a line there's so many options you could do at this point and then not have to work with them after baking if you're in a hurry you need them to be quick just putting some snowflake sprinkles on them and that would be easier for mass production hello okay now I have to figure out how to set that up again okay so my oven is still preheating see how these bake up but again I've got these little fondant hooks that were painted in gold or just dusted with gold I didn't actually paint them but um, I took this sterling pearl wedding gold from the sugar art it's too bright um, Sorry guys, I'm <laughs> there. Sterling Pearl Wedding Gold. And I just took a brush and dusted them. But you could also mix it with their color solution or vodka or um, an extract and actually have more of a, a thorough paint job on them. But this is just dusted. So depending on what you want, there's lots of options you can do. You can still kind of see the white through it, and that's just more of a dusting. Okay, preheat. Uh, we're almost there. How's everyone doing? Anyone getting overly excited about the holidays? Anyone already celebrate and are just so excited it's over or sad it's over? Hanukkah ended a while ago. Oh. <laughs> it's good to see you, Cookie Nibs. Okay, I am going to put these bad boys in. I think the color's really pretty too. I'm just a little sad because I knew when the color, the extra cocoa powder popped in, I was like, no, don't do it. Okay. So I preheat this Oster oven, Oster, I think it's Oster. I preheat this Oster oven at 300 and then when I actually have the macarons in, I drop it down to 275. It only goes 15, 15 degree increments. Uh, so this is Fahrenheit I'm talking. So now it's 275 Fahrenheit and I'm gonna start it at 13 minutes. 13 minutes and then I'll check okay all right anyone have questions anything macaron related that they want to ask while we wait um because usually I have like something in the oven and then I am doing something else let me know if you have questions I have some gluten-free cookies and cream buttercream from, you know, Trader Joe's has the gluten-free Oreos. So I'm gonna just use this to fill my macarons. I wanted to do chocolate, but my children don't like chocolate. So they're always like, can you please do some vanilla? I haven't seen that new oven. Um, so cookie nibs, I got this, I got this Oster toaster oven because of peer pressure. No. Um, I saw a lot of people, you can see through the the doors here. So if they're like French doors, they're really cute. Let me show you. Oops. Okay. So it doesn't fit a half, a half sheet tray in there. So it's really small, but I loved it and I wanted it, so I got it. And it was only, it's only like 150 right now on Amazon, it's up to 200, so don't buy it now. And everybody, I'm telling you, public service announcement, during the holidays, everything is 
when price goes higher, even if they say it's on sale. Um, so it was a good price point and I use it for dinners too so I don't heat up the whole house during the summer. So it was really a good purchase. That's why I got it. <laughs> that was so long-winded. Um, I know, macaron maker, yeah, my kids, specifically my son, he does not like chocolate, he does not like cheese, he does not like anything, he's very particular. He won't eat beef, he won't, he, he won't eat mashed potatoes or rice. He, that kid is the most particular kid, but chocolate is on that list of things he will not eat. So I wanna give him something he will eat. Even though Oreos have like a little chocolate in them, they're not chocolatey enough to make him upset. So he'll eat these. So, Roberta, that's a great question. It's raining here, too. Um, as you can see, because I didn't close my window today by accident, uh, it definitely affects it. I'll show you what helps, though. So, what I do is I have a dehumidifier. So, this bad boy runs a few hours before I start baking in the rain. It's at 46 in here. Um, and this just collects the water. Uh, so I make sure to run that. And then also if you have a heater, central, central heat or air conditioner, both dry out the environment too and that helps on those rainy days. So if it's rainy and hot, you can turn on your air conditioner, but if it's rainy and cold, you can also turn on your heater. Um, <clears throat> yeah doing those types of things, closing all your windows, do not keep the doors open and say, hello, humidity, come on in. You close it out and you say, stay out, and it will help you. Anything below 55 um, humidity, 55%, I feel like 56 even, I've done it when it was 56 humidity in here inside my home, and I still got good macarons. Anywhere above that, it starts to affect them, even if you do no rest it can start um, creating a crack top. There we go. I, I know, cookie nibs, I know. Chalk, I mean, cheese is like, cheese is everything. Oh my goodness. Cookie nibs, you are just so generous. You have a, you rock. Oh my goodness, thank you. Is it okay to add the food coloring during the meringue process? For sure, Lorraine, you can definitely add food coloring to your to the meringue. Uh, just make sure it's not liquid, like the store-bought kind, make sure it's a paste. So paste or the powder, like what I was using today. So depending on what you have, gel pastes or um, a liquid, sorry, gel paste or a powder from like the sugar art are great if you have super liquidy I would not recommend it like water uh, based and then there's oil soluble macro um, oil soluble colorings coloring <laughs> oil soluble colorants that are not good for your meringue they will break down your meringue as soon as you add them so like the color mill has beautiful colorants but it's for chocolate and it's meant to um, it has fat in it, so um, it's oil soluble. So don't use oil soluble colorants. Why do I have to repeat myself 700 times? Come on. Okay. Um, so yeah, Roberta, on the on the front of the environment, definitely ways to combat it. It's raining all the time here, and so I've just learned to. You know, you don't even have to. If you don't have a dehumidifier, don't go get one. It's really expensive. Um, unless, like, this is your business and you feel really like it's a great investment. But, like, you don't have to spend money. Just close all your windows, turn on the air or heater, and get it done. No rest works really nicely, too, because it gives less time for the environment to break down your meringue. Okay. Mwah, yes, I'm so glad, Cookie Nibs. Chocolate macarons are seriously so dang good. 
And I know I'm making chocolate macarons and I said my son doesn't like chocolate, but he'll eat any macarons. He just doesn't like a super chocolate filling. Okay, enough about that, I'm sorry. Um, oh, Lynette, I'm so happy to hear you've had success with that one too. You just have to make sure you have the right amount of chocolate, cocoa powder, or else um, things can go sour. So right now, I'll show you guys the feet in the back of this is so, they're so tall. Let's see if you can see. They will settle down a lot. But do you, can you see in that how tall they are? They're big guys. I'm excited to take them out. We're gonna sprinkle them with some diamond dust and then put on, fill them up. Ooh, Tiffany, that's an awesome, awesome resource. So Tiffany said that you can find dehumidifiers on OfferUp. I've never even heard of that. Is that um, an app or a website? That's so great. I feel like dehumidifiers, you can bleach the, the basin where all the water collects and they're as good as new. So that's a great idea. I'm always, because it's really nice to have a dehumidifier. It's just if, you know, they get a little pricey. It's an app for people to, awesome, offer up. Go check it out, y'all. Thank you, Tiffany. Mm. Uh, I have found. Yeah, Roberta, I feel, I don't know where you live. I don't want you to like have to share where you live, but if you live in a super humid place that it's hard to close out the environment, like more of a, a, a hotter humid place, I feel like the homes are more like open to the air and it can be difficult to keep that out. Ohio, okay. Um, so no, <laughs> probably not. Um, you probably have a good closing out the environment because it gets cold there too. So yeah, definitely run your air um, heater or air and that should help a lot. And then if you can do no rest, like you said, do that. But I know you have second and third trays when you're doing large production, so it doesn't help as much for that, but yeah. Oh my goodness, these are humongous feet. Settle down. I want to flip my tray because they're getting so big. I don't usually flip these bad boys, but they're really big. Yes, cookie nibs. I know. Things have changed. I feel like when I first moved here, I was resting for like 40 minutes because uh, I was so worried about the humid environment and now I just do no rest. So if I'm doing in a big, in my regular gas conventional oven, no fan, I will use an air bake tray. So it has, it's it's called, I think it, the brand is Tefal or Tefal, I don't know. And that's what I use for my gas. And then in if you have a convection oven, Sometimes if it's effective and it blows the air, then it allows for the tops of your macarons to dry before they crack and then your feet still rise. I'm gonna flip this and reverse it just cause it's making me worried. They're so tall. They're not settling down. And I broke my fingers. Hopefully I reverse it. Okay. It says two more minutes as well and they're they look super not um, cooked. So I'm gonna do So now I added one more minute. We'll see. This, the bad thing about this toaster oven 
is that it doesn't have a very easy timer. When the timer goes off, the whole oven shuts off. So you can't let the timer run to the end if, you, if you're just like testing out and seeing if it's done. So you have to make sure you're watching the timer because you don't want the whole thing to turn off and then you have to like re preheat and everything like that. And then when you're adding time, sometimes it's like 30 second time increments, sometimes it's a minute, depending on how low it is. So you can't like push in your time. So that gets gets me confused as to like how long I bake something sometimes. But I added like a minute more, we'll see. Okay, oh no, they're so big, Macaron Maker. We made big ornaments. This, I think, I'll, let's measure it. I think it was two and a half diameter when I made the template. I wanted them big, yeah, two and a half inch diameter on these Frosties. So they're, they're big guys. And they're just so flipping tall right now. My buttercream, I put it all, I put my buttercream in the freezer all the time. Um, so it's still a little bit cold. I'm trying to work it and warm it up. But since I'm not doing production these days, like I'll make something and then just throw it in the freezer and take it out when I need it. Uh, okay, I have an electric oven in my mind. Lynette. Um, electric oven, yeah, I feel like all ovens are so different. They do not come equally, right? And Cookie Nibs has a really good point that you just kind of have to play with it. And I know you've been around a lot, so I've, I bet you've tried everything under the sun with yours. But just like Cookie Nibs said, doing the different positions would be great to like see um, like take it away from the heat source a little bit if you're getting ruffled feet or turned down you know then you have to come back hollow so it's kind of a, a little game but Cookie Nibs has a great suggestion of taking notes and doing that testing not only temperatures in your oven which I would go a little lower if you're not super happy with them um, just not even knowing, but usually electric tends to have the ruffled feet a little bit more like these ones. But you can go lower in temperature or moving that rack. Trying to warm her up. I'm very into like giving a gender to everything today, I guess. I'm like, oh no, I didn't watch out. Back on. So that was 15 minutes all together. I'm gonna do two more minutes, or let's do three minutes and I'll check because of how awkward this thing is. It's pretty funny how the difference of, when I did a spiral piping, they're so much smaller than the big dollop that I did with the other piping. It's quite hilarious. You can definitely tell that they are a different size. Okay. No rest, does no rest work only with the airbag tree? Steffi, I just saw your question about does no, no rest work with a different type of tray? I have not had it success, successfully work um, with a different type of tray. If you're able to bake with your tray upright like this with the lip, then you could double up on your sheet tray and try that. That's how I would do it with Italian method and it used to work uh, and I would do no rest. But it really depends on your oven. So you'll, you'll have to play that one by ear. But air bake tray really is awesome. But if you love layer up your trays, that will help 
kind of mimic an air bake tray. Oh, interesting, Roberta. So just having, okay, oh, you know what? I wonder if that's because heat doesn't transfer as quickly when it's upside down. And so, um, so here's your tray, right? And it hits the rack, heats it up pretty quickly, and it gets your macarons quicker, quickly heats up. If you're like this, the rack is just hitting the edges and not the bottom and probably doesn't heat up as quickly. So that's gonna give it time to slowly rise, which will hopefully help the ruffle part of the macaron. Because I mean, some people love ruffled feet, some people hate it. I feel like most home bakers like the flat, clean, silk pat look that is created. But most of the big name brands have a ruffled foot. Um, so it really depends on your preference. I would never say ruffled feet are not as good. I'm gonna just double check how we're doing on these. But it definitely does change, right? Depending on what you do. So I would never have thought of that. So that's awesome, Roberta. So electric oven people, if you don't already flip your tray, maybe try that if, if something is not aesthetically pleasing to your eye. I learned so much from you guys, so thank you for sharing. I'm gonna do another minute because it is still going. But usually in this little toaster oven, I only have to bake my macarons, my regular one and three quarters inch macarons to two inches for 14 minutes, 13 to 14 minutes. Whereas in my big oven, I have to bake 20 to 22 minutes. So really different types of baking and lengths of baking. Postable, so I feel like they're a little bit nicer, but you can definitely use the the reusable ones for filling. These Flower Girl piping bags clean really nicely. Hopefully they're done because I let it go off again. happy that the feet, I mean the tops feel nice and sturdy. So that part's good with the co extra cocoa powder I was worried about ruining my batter. So that part's good, they're nice and stiff or sturdy, but the feet are still wiggling and I'll show you guys, I'll bring you over. So I added, I put my, my thing back on. But these are so fatty that they're gonna take a good amount of time to bake, I guess. So, let me show you what they're doing, and we'll, we'll see what we should do. Let's see. See how much they go down? I wanna bake a little bit longer. if you guys could see that. How is my vacation? Olga, uh, do you mean the one when we went to Anchorage and California? So my husband was interviewing for jobs. I'm like falling over. <laughs> he was interviewing for a couple jobs and um, it was good. It was very nice. 
is overwhelming to think about moving again, but it's exciting. I'll try a tiny batch experiment. You're very good at experimenting, Steffi. I feel like you figured out a ton through your unique trials. So um, I'm excited for you. I feel like, yeah, you've learned so much in the last however long span because you've gone to like every single macarons after hours and everything. So I love it. Number. Ooh, I know. I'm, I'm excited about the burgundy and the gold. I'm just mad at myself for not being more of a ruby red. But that's okay. So I've got this like 10 karat gold diamond dust as well as the wedding gold that I'll paint on to the top um, by adding it. I have some sugar art. I have their color solution coming, but I don't have it with me yet. So um, for now, I will use the extract, vanilla extract. <sighs> mm -hmm. Lynette, I know it's crazy. I just, we were only going to be in Portland for two years, but it's flown by so much. And then we weren't sure exactly where we'd end up. And I gotta tell you, it's not anywhere I would have expected. <laughs> oh, Steffi, you owe it to yourself. You're the one working hard and trying all of these different things. Like we can give some advice, but the real work is in everybody's own kitchen as you guys experiment on your own stuff. So it's really fun to see how everybody grows throughout the the time of starting their macaron journey to just a few months later. All right, let's see. Guys, I can I've never had to bake them so long. I'm gonna do one more minute. That's it. They were big. I gotta give myself that. I also don't want to over bake them. It was fun. Yeah, it was very fun. And congratulations to you. I saw on a um, announcement, I think, that you were expecting a baby. <laughs> now, after I say things, I'm like, oh wait, maybe I shouldn't say that, I don't know, but I think you made it public on Instagram. So congratulations and ignore this if it's not something that you're talking about or if I have, I don't know. Um, let's see. Yeah, macaron maker, two years up here. Well, no, it's only been a year and a half. We still will be here until next July. So we have until next July in Portland. So no, it's only been a year and a half. Um, we still have time. But it's all so interesting, you know, like this pandemic has made things feel really long and also super short. All right, I fail at doing this temperature, but we're gonna take these out now. I got chocolate cookies in my. Here they are. They look so funny without, um, without like when they're all just together, they look very interesting. But there's our ornaments. So you can see these two that I piped differently. These ones are baked nicely, but the rest I'm a little worried are underbaked. Um, but yeah, I don't wanna overbake them. So I'm gonna pull them out. And you're right, cookie nibs, this is gonna look real nice with gold, super nice. But yeah, I'm gonna just let them cool because I don't think these will come off of the mat right now. They could definitely use a little bit more baking, but um, I'm not going to. Cause I'm, these ones are perfect. 
So these are the two that I piped in a spiral and then all the rest were piped in that big blob, which gets nice and chunky and fat and I love that look, but it does take longer to bake, obviously. So we'll let those cool. Um, and then afterwards, I'll just let them cool for a little bit. Then I can show you guys really quickly because I know it is getting late already. We will paint the top really fast and then we will fill and stick a little tip in and it will be sans the face, without the face, like a little ornament. And if you like splatter with some gold, I feel like that would look nice too. The more I do, the less it looks nice because I'm just so heavy handed with all my decor. So I try to keep it very minimum. Okay. Uh, I spent all morning making two dozen Grinch character macarons. Oh God, oh my goodness. You have the most intricate character designs lately. I'm still obsessed with the Nightmare Before Christmas one. Olga, will you share your handle? Is it Divine Sweets, Olga? Just so people can check out your pages. Um, yeah. But let's see. Yeah, Cookie Nibs, you should definitely try the no rest method, but make sure it's like small batch trying. And it would not want like a whole batch to go into your oven and then have it not work. I use milk on the bottom. That's some. I've done milk. I've done simple syrup. Um, simple syrup obviously adds extra sweetness, but those are great ways to combat a little bit of an overbake for sure. Um, or like a more wet of a filling, like any type of cream cheese filling would be good with a little bit of an overbaked. But. I always get sad when I overbake, even with those types of precautions or ways to combat it, it still doesn't have as soft as a bite as it does if you like if they're baked perfectly, you know? Divine Sweets by Olga. Yeah, go check her out, guys. They were so hollow. Roberta, uh, that's I've had that issue too with with um, character macarons that they would just get so fragile and I think for me personally it was because I was taking so long to pipe with a French meringue that it was just kind of um, losing its strength the batter by the time I was done and they wouldn't be the best outcome I found since doing no rest with character macarons it's helped me a lot and using this um, Oster oven I think that's the how you Someone amazing sent me an old commercial via YouTube of how to pronounce this brand, and I'm pretty sure this brand, and I'm pretty sure it was Os o Oster, Oster Toaster, yeah, Oster. Um, but it was so funny because this brand has been around for for a very long time. But knowing me, you guys know that I just can't pronounce anything. So thank you, Roberta. Okay, Oster. Boom. Okay, I'm not very patient with this stuff. Let's get our solution ready to paint the tip of the decoration. So I've got diamond dust and sterling pearl gold. So the sterling pearl is gonna be a better um, painter. So we're gonna sprinkle a tiny bit of this dust, this pearl, sterling pearl. You don't need a ton. And then I'm just gonna do a couple drops of an extract or vodka or the Sugar Arts color solution that they just came out with. I can't wait to use it. I will usually just drop in the color. I mean, I have a little eyedropper, but I don't know where I put it last time after I used it. An eyedropper is nice just because then you don't over, you don't put too much in, which makes it so you don't waste your product. But if you do add a little ex too much extract in, the good thing is it dries out 
and you can just wait for it to dry out and get less thick. Still works, but I don't use it, but I, yeah, you should try, right? I know, they, their products have been around for ages, so I'm mixing it. And honestly, the price point for this one was so good, and you can, it goes so deep too. Costco has a version of it right now um, for a fairly good price, but it wasn't the same one. This one has like a turbo convection setting. That's the one I bake my macarons on. Um, and it goes back really nice. So it's good for, you know, um, like I've made cornbread in it and different things like that. But anything bigger than this sheet tray doesn't fit, like a regular half sheet tray doesn't fit in there so don't buy it if you're doing a big product like lots of production it's gonna just make you sad that you can't even use the half sheet tray in there okay so I mixed that sterling gold in with some vanilla extract it wasn't even clear vanilla extract because that that color that golden color of the extract goes nicely with my gold and then um, I will paint the top. So just like painting the tip top, it has a little bit too much of the extract in right now. So if it gets a little bit drier, it'll be even better. So I'm going to let it just sit. doing um I really want to take them off there we go it's getting so dark outside all right I can get at least two off then I can sandwich one together for us I always like when I'm nervous at all peel back from the bottom I don't I don't go in and just try to rip it off you know I peel the mat off of it so these ones are completely different sizes cool Nicole cool Oh, they smell so good like brownies all right here we go so this one matches up nicely I just really want to paint one at least for you guys to see sandwich it together and put the little hoop at the top um it's so funny because on YouTube when people talk about the feet of the macarons, they will have me, like, I have to um, agree to allow that comment on. When you, Cookie Nibs, you put something about a foot fetish. It was like, this could be, you know, inappropriate content. Just makes me laugh. Okay. Aw, that's so sweet, Stevie. You loved her. I want, I want to go look at Olga's. Okay, so painting. And again, if you had the two-toned one, if you had a, two colors for one batch, you could definitely bring this down with a toothpick, the batter, and have it have that, that jagged line. But I just want a straight line for mine. I like when these are even thicker, but for now this will work. But when it's uh, less liquid, it'll dry out and I'll, I'll do another um, layer. But I like it when it's thicker and almost powdery still, because then it stays on even better. But for the purpose of time, I'm just going to paint these 
and then we'll fill as soon as we can. Right now they're too hot. I'm gonna put them on the table so they cool faster. Perfect little matches. I'm so glad that they weren't overbaked. I was, I mean, underbaked. I was so worried they weren't gonna come off my mat. Aren't they so big though? <laughs> They're so big. I almost like the ones that I don't like. The ones I don't like piping as much, you know? Just for the sake that they're not so overwhelmingly big like this size is a little bit nicer but oh well which one do you i mean can you tell that they're a different so much different oh no that is a big cookie right <laughs> Yep, no wrinkle, that's good. They have nice and sturdy. Sturdy tops, um, which is always a good thing. You never know when you're doing, when you're doing these chocolate max, right? You gotta be really careful with that chocolate. Okay, so I just need to get one more off the mat. I think those are probably cool enough where I can at least showcase the end result and we can say ta-ta or goodbye. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's me. So, yeah, it's hard. Oh, I'm so glad you like them, Roberta. It's hard to tell over this, I feel like, but these are a little warm still. I don't recommend filling. Um, well, warm, because your buttercream will melt. But you know me, always doing things and saying not to do them. Okay. So here we go. I wanna make sure that buttercream goes up to the top so I can place the little ornament top that I made. And then sandwich them together. Because if you did these with, um, let's see if I can get it out a little bit more. If you did these with, um, I could probably make this even bigger of a loop. But if you did that design, if you did that little tip with the batter, one, it'll probably close by the time you, when you pipe it and then you bake, this probably would disappear, that little center. Or it would be so thin that it might break off when you are taking it off the mat. So better to either do like, I've seen people use pretzels for the top. Um, with how big the design is though, I definitely want to make them, this one's a little taller, let's see. I would definitely, I'm gonna remake the tops a little bit taller. But there's your ornament. Sprinkle with a little bit of glitz and glamor and we're probably good to go. Here's some diamond dust. I'm just gonna, for the sake of time, sprinkle on there and then I'll take a brush. This is like a fan brush. give it some some shine and then when this when I put too much too much um, liquid in this but when it's a little bit less liquidy I'll go over it again to give it more definition of color but isn't that fun it is huge you probably only need one to and it will last you like a day um, three days maybe 
but it's fun, right? I could definitely improve the uh, dusting, but I love it. It's a huge freaking ornament macaron with some cookies and cream in there. So, but like I was saying, some people will put pretzels in the top. Um, you could do, if you like have a sour flavor inside, you could do those sour ropes. You could do, um, what, yeah, it's selling for like $6, you're right. They're so, they're so substantial. <laughs> Um, it's like your own little mini four inch cake, I feel like. What else have I seen? So pretzels, oh, candy melts, um, all the different things you can do, but I use little fondant things. Life-size ornaments, exactly. And now I need a life-size macaron Christmas tree to put, put them on. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining today. I feel like I've made a disaster of a mess right here in with glitter, but that's usual. Oh, chocolate licorice. Yeah, you could do that with like a star anise flavored buttercream. Yum. Or ganache. Even better. That would be really good. Yeah. But let's see. I know. We need a Christmas tree life size macaron Christmas tree. I feel like that might be something one of the big pastry chefs will do on Instagram at some point. I feel like they do such crazy things with big chocolate bears and it's so fun to see them. Um, okay, my friends, thanks so much for joining in and making little ornaments with me or big ornaments, yeah, big guys. Hope you guys have a good rest of your break. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Don't you love having, yes, you're right. I need to be positive about this this happy color, right? You're right. <clears throat> it's just not red. When I say red, I want some red. But either way. God bless. Yes, please. Um, yes, please. I don't know what I'm saying, but thanks so much for joining. And it was so good having you here, Cookie Nibs. I've missed you. Have a good Christmas as well. And thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. And again, hopefully in two weeks, as mentioned, um, we'll do another live and it will be the last of the year 2021. And we'll make a big batch of macarons in the mixer using the stand mixer to mix in our dries as well. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate and happy holidays. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course, Olga. Anyone, I want you guys to share your handles. You all have such beautiful work. It's fun to um, connect. I feel like most people have connected with one another here, but don't feel shy. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. Oh yeah, I have to stop it up here. Thanks for joining and thanks for your guys' questions. Bye.